Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Today's video is going to be a book haul. So a few weeks ago, I had a friend ask me, when do you think you will do another book haul video? And I said, honestly, probably not for a while. I feel like I made one not that long ago and I don't think I have acquired enough books since then to justify a full book haul video. Well, the joke is totally on me because it turns out my most recent book haul video was six months ago. And if you could see the stacks around me right now, apparently I have acquired a lot of new books in that six months. So there are a lot of books here, but I'm gonna kind of try to keep this sweet and short for you guys. I'm gonna run through what I got, where I got it, if it's noteworthy, if I plan to read it, if I've already read it. And I'm gonna try not to move around too much because my shelves are bare because there are literally so many books to talk about today. So the first one I wanna show you is special because my husband got it for me for Valentine's Day. And to my recollection, I believe this is the first time he has ever got me a book as a gift. And I couldn't have been happier because I'm not a flowers and candy kind of girl. Like take me out for margaritas and buy me a book and I will be as happy as can be. So he completely surprised me by getting me House of Leaves. Now this is a book that I don't actually know that much about other than I know that it's weird. And just flipping through it, ooh, dropped it. Uh, just flipping through it, like this is totally true. Like it's weird. You guys, there are pages like this where I have like one word on a page. They use different fonts, um, different colored ink. Like sometimes it looks like it's written with a typewriter. Sometimes there's like text within text. It's so strange, but I am really excited to read this. I have no idea when I'm going to read it, who I'm going to read it with, but this is something I do want to read with people, like as a buddy read, because it looks crazy. And I think it's going to be stuff that's maybe up to interpretation or will take two sets of eyes or plus to kind of really get the most out of it. At least for me, like here's a page with nothing but X's in a box. So I'm really excited to read this, but I think it's pretty bizarre. So Thank you, Matt, for buying me House of Leaves. But most of all, just thank you for buying me a book that was really unexpected and it made me very happy. All right, the next one up, I listened to this on audio, but as soon as I heard that the physical book had photographs in it, I had to get a copy of it. So I picked this up at the old Walmart. This is The Storyteller by Dave Grohl. And he audit, he um, narrated the audio. It was really, really good. I super enjoyed this book. But I'm really, really glad that I got a physical copy of it because this is a nice book. Like it's textured, it's very high quality, and it does have photographs and stuff inside. So if you are into um, rock and roll, memoirs, Nirvana, Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters, any of that stuff, or just kind of like interested in a life that's different than your own, he is an amazing storyteller. And I had so much fun. I actually have listened to the audiobook twice now. I listened to it once on my own and then once with my husband in the car. It was really good. I want to start reading The Expanse this year. So I've started picking up these books right here. These are cool looking books, great covers. They look great on a shelf. I'm a little frustrated because I bought a lot of three books, three used books. They're in great condition, by the way, um, from a seller on eBay. And he's holding number two hostage for some reason. Like I never got number two. I've been in email war with him ever since. So right now I have one and three, but I'm missing number two, which is Caliban's war, which is super frustrating to me. But one way or the other, I will get it. But right now it just kind of bothers me that I'm missing some of my collection there. Another series that I recently picked up used on eBay was the Godline trilogy. Now these are not in nearly as good of condition as those Expanse books were, but they are the condition that they were listed in. I didn't go crazy spending a ton of money on these because I wasn't sure how I would like them. So they came in very readable condition. I wasn't upset about them because they were a great price. But what did upset me was it wasn't listed that book three is a different edition, a different size. And so this is what they look like on my shelf right now. And that's a huge a huge problem for me. So like, it doesn't bother me the fact that these are only in fair condition, but it does bother me that the third one is smaller. And what's funny is the one that 
that's the small one, the odd one out that's making me crazy is in like perfect condition. And these two are kind of junky, but I prefer the size that they're in. So now I have to try to track this one down, not only in the same size, but preferably in approximately the same condition because I'm very weird. And I just want them to all look like they go together. Something I really hope to get to this year is reading some Conan. And so I picked this up. It is an omnibus of several Conan stories. And these are the Robert E. Howard ones. Ones. I picked this up on Amazon, but then I found this at a used bookstore, and this is Robert Jordan Conan. Um, I haven't read any of these so far, but th this is in terrible condition, but gosh, it was just so cute. This little box set that has these old school Conan novels, and I just thought it was so cute, and I'm obsessed with this art style. So yeah, I was pretty happy. I found this at a, I can't even remember if it was a used bookstore or a thrift store, because I go to a lot of both. But this box set right here was $4.50. And like I said, it's not in the best condition, but it was way too cute for me to pass up. The Last House on Needless Street, I picked this one up at the recommendation of a friend. I think it's kind of sold as a horror novel, but he said it was actually, it had more of like a true crime kind of vibe. Um, I was going to just pick it up on Kindle because I'm not that invested in the story at this point, so I don't necessarily need it on hardcover. But this was one of those situations where the Kindle book was like $10.99 and then the hardcover was like $12.99. And I was like, I am not spending $11 on a digital book when I can have a physical um, hardcover of it for like $2 more. So I did order it. I have not read it yet, but this is something I would like to get to in the next couple months because it's a nice short size and I've heard that it's very good. This winter I have gone through a huge J. Kristoff binge and I was going to ask for this for Christmas, but then I got way too much FOMO because I had so many friends reading it and I had to get to it right away. So I bought myself Empire of the Vampire right before Christmas. And this was one of my favorite books that I read in all of 2021. It does have awesome um, illustrations in it. And this is a book one of the series that I'm hoping will shape up to be a favorite because I absolutely love this book. So after I was so high on that one, I decided to read the Dark Dawn Chronicles. And I bought these for myself after selling off my Malazan collection. So as you guys know, I have DNF'd Malazan. I read the first seven books and I already own the entire series on Kindle. And so if I decide to come back to the series at some point, if I'm doing more of the, I'm not quitting, I'm just walking away for a while. I'm not sure where I'm at yet with that. But if I decide to come back to that series, I have the whole thing on Kindle. So I decided to sell my Malazan books to free up space on my shelves. Plus they were a mismatch anyway. They didn't bring me any joy to look at them. I got rid of those, sold them, and I bought myself these beautiful Dark Dawn hardcovers. Um, with the, with the proceeds of that sale. Um, I read the series in January and I absolutely loved it. I hope to read it again someday. And so that makes me happy that I have such a nice set of them on my shelves. Another series I've started recently and have just really been digging the saga of the Forgotten Warrior. Book one is The Son of the Black Sword. Book two is House of Assassins. And book three is my current Book three is my current read, and that is Destroyer of Worlds. I can't say enough good stuff about this series. I'm three books in. The author is three books in. There's more to come. So far, I'm just absolutely digging it, and I hope more people will pick this series up and try it. But man, um, these hardcovers are pretty easy to find. On I, I got all three of these used, and I'm glad that I have them going. I have my collection going in hardcover because these books, this series, will be a day one you know, pre-order, read it as soon as it comes out. I'm really, really liking the series. So I'm very happy to have the whole thing on hardcover. Let's do some Star Wars books. So I have only read three Star Wars books at this point, but I really, really liked the three that I read. And so for the last while, I have been picking Star Wars books up to add to my collection as I'm out and about doing my used bookstore and thrift book shopping. So let me show you what I've gotten so far. Um, I have this one, it's called um, Allegiance and it's a Timothy Zahn one. And you know, hardcover Timothy Zahn, $1.50, how could I say no? Exact same scenario for this one. This one is called Survivor's Quest and on the front we've got like Mara Jade and Luke, Timothy Zahn, hardcover, $1.50 at Goodwill. You gotta get them, you guys. 
Now, um, the rest of these, I don't know too much about. These are the ones I'm going to read next. These are the Jedi Academy, and these are Kevin J. Anderson books. There's three of them. These are the ones I'm gonna read next. These are New Jedi Order. What we have here is Dark Tide, Dark Tide 1, Dark Tide 2, Onslaught and Ruin. These are Michael A. Stackpole. Now, I've never read a series like this where it's like all within one universe, but it has lots of different contributing authors. I haven't ever done that. So I'm not familiar with uh, Michael A. Stackpole, but uh, these are books I have. You guys can tell me in the comments if you read them, if they're any good. Um, after that, I have Vector Prime on deck. I have it waiting. And this is another Timothy Zahn one I found at Goodwill for 50 cents. It has kind of a cheesy cover, but it has right here, uh, Lando, Han, and Chewie. Like, they look like they are like being detained or something. It's called Scoundrels, and this one was 50 cents. So when you go to Goodwill, all hardcovers are $1.50 and paperbacks are 50 cents. So anytime I drive past at Goodwill, uh, if it's possible at all, I pull over, run inside and check out the book section. I usually walk out with nothing, but sometimes I walk out with some interesting finds and a few times I have walked out with amazing finds. So when you're when you're looking at a 50 cents, dollar 50, you got to pull over, you got to check it out because you never know what you'll find in a Goodwill. Next up is some Michael J. Sullivan, who is a favorite of mine. I typically like to buy all of my Michael J. Sullivan books directly from the author because that's the best way for him to get paid and he has put a lot of work into making his store accessible for people and kind of cutting out the middleman. But right before I started reading these books, which these are all Ryer Chronicle books, I found these used and I couldn't say no, I cannot say no to a good deal. So I picked those up, those are the first two. They are called The Crown Tower and the Rose and the Thorn. Um, and so I picked those up used and then I ordered the next two directly from his site. Now eventually, especially if I get someone to read these, I may give these away so that I can get these all matching because these are Orbit and these are the ones that he self-publishes, which are Ryera Enterprises. At some point, he switched from Orbit Publishing to publishing himself. And so these just have a different look to them. They have different artwork on the front that I actually prefer quite a bit. And they are glossy and I just really want them to all match because I super, super enjoyed the Ryera Chronicles. So as of now, matching these up is not like a top priority find for me, but I would like eventually for all four of them to match because I really enjoy these books and I want them to have matching companions. And like I said, I would like to buy them all directly from Michael J. Sullivan versus just picking them up used in the wild. In my last book haul video, I showed you guys that I had purchased my first Blake Crouch novel. Well, since then I have purchased and read quite a few others. That first one was Dark Matter. And since then I have purchased and read Recursion, which was very good. I read all of the Wayward Pines trilogy, which was one of my favorite things I read last year. I got a huge kick out of this. Um, it is a little frustrating to me that my cover of Pines has the, um, the show adaptation on it, whereas the other two are still just like normal looking books. That's a little frustrating for me, so I might have my eyes peeled for a Pines edition that matches my other two, but that was a really fun read. And then I also have Abandon, which I will be starting on Monday with a group of friends. Don't know much about this one other than he's doing his thing with his dual timelines. Looks like part of it's way back in the past and part of it is current time. And I'm sure he's going to do something trippy that I will end up loving because so far, guys, I have read um, five Blake Crouch novels, I believe, and every one of them has been a total home run. Another recent purchase I made for myself after unhauling some books that I decided I didn't want to keep on my shelf, wasn't mad at them or anything, but they were just books that either I DNF'd the series or I finished the series and realized there's a little to no chance that I'm ever going to read this again or even probably recommend it to somebody. So I got rid of some other stuff to not only free up space on my shelf, but also to kind of pad my book budget. And one of the series I bought with that freed up book budget was The Kings of Paradise by Richard Nell. Let's see, of Ash and Sand, Ash and Sand, that's the name of the series. Book one is King of Paradise. Then we have Kings of Ash and then Kings of Heaven. Now this is a series that I know a few people that have read the 
pull things through. Um, I first got wind of the series from my friend Mike. He read book one and did quite like it. But now I know a couple of people who have read the whole thing. And they say as a whole, this series is really, really cool and definitely something I should check out sooner rather than later. So I did get these so I could have them ready to go. I'm not sure when I'll read these, but I imagine it will be this year in 2022. The Alienist was recommended to me by my friend Tamara. And guys, it was so good. This is by Caleb Carr, and there is a follow-up novel that has the same characters in it, I believe. It is called The Angel of Darkness. This was really, really fun. It was definitely like a um, psychological thriller, crime novel, mystery, historical fiction. Like it had a little bit of everything, but it worked, man. I cannot wait to get to the next one. I had a lot of fun reading The Alienist. This is A Boy's Life by Robert McCann, and this is recommended to me by my friend Scott, the bald booktuber. And um, I this was sold to me as like a great coming of age story, which is one of my faves. So I am excited to get to this one again sooner rather than later. I see myself reading this within the next six months, because from what I understand, this is going to be a book that really, um, really jives with me. This year, my group of book club friends did a Secret Santa gift exchange, and my friend Ryan sent me The Arm of the Sphinx, which is book two of Sinlin Ascends. I now have the whole collection, and I'm very excited to read that at some point in 2022. I have the books ready, I have the audiobooks ready, and I'm ready to go on that one. Um, these are some collections of short stories and fairy tales. These are also things I picked up at used bookstores. Um, this is a Sherlock Holmes collection. We have this Agatha Christie collection, and this was actually on a free bookshelf, like outside of a used bookstore. They have racks of books that are like a dollar or free, just like giveaway. And this was on it for absolutely free. It's a hardcover. It's in really good condition considering how old it is. I believe this actual um, copy, see I looked this up before, but this actual copy is very old. So I was like, huh, I don't think it's worth anything. I'm not saying like, oh, what a find. But it's still a cool book that I'm excited to read these. Uh, five classic murder mysteries for free. How about that? I got this, Philip Pullman, who wrote um, Golden Compass. You know, not really my favorite necessarily, but I thought this was interesting. It was fairy tales from the Brothers Grimm, but, you know, written by Philip Pullman. And then I also found this one at the same used bookstore that I got the Agatha Christie book for free. I got this one for a dollar. This one is the complete fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm. And Lucy and I have had fun with this. We've already pulled this out a few times and read a couple short stories from it. So definitely check out the freebies and the super cheap books because you never know what you will find in there. I did get a little bit of Tad Williams recently. Um, I'm reading Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, and I already had the Dragon Bone Chair and um, Stone of Farewell in that white trade paperback with the big swords on them. And I actually prefer these Michael Whelan covers, but you know, two out of three, I already had one, so I'm going for. I found this one at a used store and it was $4, so I went ahead and picked it up so I'd have something to read next month when I read this book. But I am still on the hunt to get that white one with the sword just because it already matches what I have. Or I could get the other two with the Michael Whelan covers and that would be fine too. But I do need for all three of them to match. And just once again, like, can we just appreciate the sheer size of this book? I think this might be the biggest book I've ever read. I'm kind of nervous, I'm not gonna lie. And I also got Otherland by Tad Williams. And I believe that this is book one of the next series. I'm going to be a little embarrassed if I open this up and be like, this is book seven. Yeah, I don't know. Golden City. I don't know. Either way, this was $5. It was in great condition. And I really, at this point, when I bought this, I had only read Dragon Bone Chair. I liked it so much. I thought, what the heck, let's pick this up. And maybe I will start that after I finish Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. But either way, I do believe this is a pretty big series. And so I have a lot more collecting to do till I have them all. But in the meantime, I figure let's pick it up and let's get it going. And last but not least, let's go over some Stephen King. I did get some new Stephen King hardcovers. These are another favorite to keep an eye out for and to pick up at used bookstores. So I got Full Dark, No Stars. I got Four Past Midnight. I got Duma Key, which I have not taken the sticker off of this one yet, but as you can see, it was $5, very excited. And I also got Needful Things. And I hadn't planned on doing the Dark Tower in hardcover, and I still haven't decided if I'm gonna go for it and try to find all of them in hardcover, 
but I was at a used bookstore the other day, a couple weeks ago actually, and they had a sale going on, kind of a buy one, get one free situation. And they had um, Wolves of Cala, Song of Susanna, and The Dark Tower. I guess we just call this one The Dark Tower. Um, they had all of these on sale and like, you know, part of the part of the buy one, get one and marked down already. So I went ahead and picked up all three of them and I figured, if I see others in good condition and hardcover, I probably will try to piece that collection together, even though I think some of the early ones are pretty hard to find in hardcover. I'm gonna start piecing that together. If it never comes to fruition, I guess I'll just, you know, take these back to these bookstore, sell them back. But it was too uh, tempting to pass it up. So I would love to be able to put that Dark Tower to collection all together on hardcover. So. These are the books that I have purchased and acquired over the last six months. It's a lot of books, you guys. I have gotten rid of some. Not that that's required. I can do what I want. I'm a grown-up, right? But the truth is I am starting to run out of space, and I feel like the walls are closing in on me here in my office. So um, what do you guys think? And What's the next move? Do I just, just get rid of all the furniture in my house? Do I line the walls with bookshelves? Like, where do you start? Because... I love reading, but I also really, really love buying books and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. So this is what I got recently and hopefully I will do another one of these videos before it becomes quite so many again. Thanks for watching and have a great day.